What's going on, everybody? Vince Goodrum here. It is still Friday afternoon. Still sitting out here chilling and wanting to make another video. And I may even make a third one now that I'll have two obligatory videos. And this one is about, uh, well, something I haven't addressed in a couple of days about uh, old Whitey uh, Bulger getting uh, seriously uh, sent to uh, hell, basically, uh, by a couple of inmates here. Now, from what I understand, uh, they went into a cell. They literally beat the shit out of him with a lock and a sock. They gouged out his eyeballs. They had a couple of them dangling out. And they cut his fucking tongue out there. And then afterwards, uh, they actually went and got a mop bucket and actually cleaned up the whole thing. So my whole thing is, is, well, you guys know that snitches get stitches and rats get bats, but this has nothing to do whatsoever with snitches getting stitches. You know, there's two questions that you got to ask in a type of situation. Number one, what in the hell was Whitey uh, doing in that uh, prison to begin with? Why in the world was he transferred over to Hazleton in general population when it's already well known that he would get whacked the minute he actually got there. I mean, in fact, he got killed the day that he was actually sent there, his very first day. So my question is, who did he piss off at the previous prison? Now, I understand that he was making some death threats at a supervisor. So is it possible that he was intentionally sent over to Hazleton, a location where a lot of his enemies are, to where there's severe understaffing? Just for the intention of this actually happening, well, anything is possible here. Uh, but, you know, the one thing I want to let you guys know, and I hope you kids, I hope there's some kids out there that's actually watched this whole situation to let you know what the dangers of being in a gang is all about. And that is the end result. It doesn't matter how old you are. There's always going to be retribution for participating in a gang, participating in violent activities in criminal activities, stealing, robbing, selling and making drugs, you know, and doing all other sorts of nefarious activities. Whitey is pretty much the end of the situation there. And you got, and some of you guys have fawned over him, you know, watched the movie Black Mask and everything like that. But the reality of the matter is he died like a little bitch. All right. He died screaming and crying. Nobody is tough. I mean, there's no such thing as a tough guy. You know, I mentioned before that Big Rob was up there marching around through Detroit and everything. That's not what makes you tough there, you know. And people shouldn't try to emulate Whitey in order to prove something, because the only thing you're going to prove is just how quick you're going to actually end up getting killed. Now, considering that Whitey actually lived to be the age of 89, that's very impressive. <clears throat> but he met a very violent end. No different than the violent end that some of a lot of his victims actually met. So that is indeed retribution. And I hope you kids understand and see this whole situation and know that, well, this is what happens when you're in a gang. When you're committing criminal activities, everything that you do in life eventually has a way of coming back to haunt you. And Whitey, he got his there and he got it really bad. And you know what? He knew he was going to get it. And well, that's the end. No more Whitey. So take this to heart, people, especially some of you. If you got children out there, let them know there's no benefit in joining a the gang. There's no benefit in committing criminal activities. It's always going to be with disastrous consequences. That's all I got to say today on this. Take care.